All right, framing it up right now. Um, you can see we're going off some, some sketches that I did, some plans. And here's the layout. It's gonna be approximately 20 by 20 uh, incubation, about, I think it's a 14 by, tw by 16 lab. And then I got some stuff for the uh, steamers to come through over here. That's the mixing area. It's about uh, 13 or 14 by 20. Cold storage is gonna be coming in here. Some of the cold storage, probably more elsewhere. And then the spawn lab is over here. So this will be entryway, changing room, incubation for the spawn. And then the spawn lab will just be eight feet because it'll be two flow hoods wide and then probably three or four high. <laughs> Um, and the, the autoclave opening is over here. So I have an autoclave for the spawn lab. Um, and you, you could, that's actually in the background of the, the last video I posted of the epoxy floor. I'll have a video all about autoclave once I figure it out and get it, get a little progress on there. Um, so those who aren't familiar with framing, uh, one thing that was handy is we, we label all the walls, A, B, C, D, all that. So we know where they go. And then what we do is we start off with cutting the bottom plate and the top plate. So that's the bottom of the top plate for, this is what, this one's going to be the autoclave wall, which is H. So you mark them all with H and then you do 16 on centers, mark off where the doorway is. So I have a doorway right here. I marked that one wrong. Actually, it's a horrible example, but you do your, your king stud and your jack stud that way. And your inside of your jack stud is where, where your doorway width is. And then uh, we'll go off there with a jack stud and then put a 2 by 10 and I'll show you an example of a jack stud with a king stud. So here's the already done up one. And then that guy will go on top in here and then your, I forget the name of that one, cripple. Your cripple will go in the middle there. Um, so yeah, we got it all framed out. For the most part, well, we got the lab, the, the first lab and the first, the big incubation all framed out. This is the first wall of the spawn and that's the second wall of the spawn lab. So hopefully today we'll have all of the, all of the framing done except for the fruiting room, which I'm not, I'm not ready for yet. I still have to sit down and figure out exactly the dimensions of it. I know it's gonna go off of the last wall. Uh, we got Max out there. He's working on doing the door. So the house came with an exterior door so we are putting that in the in the back of the fruiting room. That way you can throw blocks outside through there and into the wood lot, which I got clearance from the farmer to go ahead and use for mushroom cultivation. So part of that's gonna be my spent logs, just piling them up out there and letting them fruit for a second flush, maybe making some jerky with them or just giving them away or whatever the hell. But yeah, so hopefully we'll have, we're still waiting on the epoxy to set. Hopefully it'll be set by tomorrow it's still a little bit tacky. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's a little bit tacky. It's actually a lot better than it was before. But we're going to wait till tomorrow to move everything in. And then it's going to look freaking crazy. It's going to go from an empty warehouse to an actual structure. And then next week I'll start pulling all these. I already pulled the wires through the walls. Now i got to pull the wires through the framing that we're doing. Start doing all the drops, outlets, lights all that stuff so should be exciting all right we got the framing all up we're starting to do the flooring above the ceiling so we got the sterilizer holes are here and that goes into the lab and there's a door in the back side of the lab kind of that goes through and we got richard over here helping out and max up there notching for for the big LVLs, that's gonna be holding the next floor up. This is a 20 by 22 foot um, incubation. So this is a sawdust incubation. So this will have some fans in it. It'll have a two ton air conditioner and some shop lighting. And then you come out through this door and all these doorways are gonna be four, or full ceiling, four eight, full eight foot ceiling height doorways. So I'm just going to add an extra strip of two by four underneath there. And that's going to be the door is going to seal again. So that way I can roll through big, tall rolling carts if needed. Um, goes out into the hallway here, cold storage over here. And this goes into the spawn lab. So this is like the changing room for the spawn lab, spawn incubation. And then here's the spawn lab in here. The autoclave goes right there. Flow hoods go all over this wall. 
and then I'll have the return for the flow hoods up underneath the ceiling. So it's going to flow out up to like a drop ceiling and then back behind the flow hood. So it's going to be a kind of a, a wind tunnel. Uh, here's the big mixing area. Potentially might get a batch mixer over here. Already got a nice 220 outlet over there. Uh, my wet bagger is going to go against that back wall. And I'll probably have some other, my spawn baggers and some other things up against that wall over there. Uh, we made the hallway a little bit wider so that way I can get the autoclave through. The floor took a lot longer to cure than we planned. It took about three days when we thought it was going to be ready the next day or, or possibly 48 hours later. It's still a little bit dry, but, uh, or no, I'm sorry, it's still a little bit tacky. Um, so we're just not dragging things on it, but I didn't want to roll the autoclave across because 2,700 pounds. I didn't want to roll that across the the three day old paint. So I'll probably wait a couple, like a week or two. The priority right now is get all the wiring pulled. I got plenty of other things to do before I even start worrying about the autoclave. Uh, but here's a quick glance at the autoclave and it's double door. I, I don't think I can open it right now because I got to release the lever. Yeah, it's locked. I got to, there's a safety in there. I got to release double door autoclave. Pretty, pretty nasty. So yeah. Um, and this will be the fruiting room. We started grinding it already. I need to grind it more. I'm probably just gonna leave it and just have some puddles here and there. It's not horrible. The puddles will probably be like a quarter of an inch deep. Um, and then Max just finished putting this back door in. So this goes out to the back. Out here, I can back up a trailer, load it up with blocks, or just throw all the blocks back here in the woods, or even onto the farm possibly if he's about to till. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's progress for the week. Today is Easter. We're working on the holidays. We're making good progress, and uh, I'm hoping I'll be up and running in, in two months. I wanted to go over a little bit about the anchoring of the bottom plates. Um, at first, we tried to, to screw them down with these guys. These are actual concrete screws. I believe they were also made by Redhead but um, or Truebolt. But they they sheared off. We used the screw or the drill bit attached or the drill bit that um, it's an impact or hammer drill, and we drove it down to the manufactured recommended length. And every single one of them, there's three holes there. Every single one of them sheared off. So I was kind of angry at that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and return this box of junk, and we're going to go to these um, wedge anchors. And these are more heavy duty. Literally says heavy duty on them, and you just pre-drill the concrete, you slide it in, and then when you go to tighten it down, what happens is that collar will slide down. And these are used commonly for like anchoring equipment, all kinds of stuff, um, and applications like this, you can do like towers and flagpoles or whatever. So these are really heavy duty, shouldn't be an issue. Kind of a bummer that I gotta make holes in my floor, my brand new floor, but I'm gonna be using that second floor. There's gonna be an office that's gonna run, run down the middle. It's going to be like a 20 foot by probably eight or nine foot office, maybe a little wider than that uh, office slash classroom slash hangout clubhouse, whatever. Um, so yeah, because of that, I'm going to have a staircase and the staircase, I want to make sure that everything's anchored. You know, I don't want to have a staircase and the wall shift and the staircase fall out from under and somebody gets hurt. So yeah, you got to do it right. You got to do it to code. So I'm going to be sinking these every couple feet and really shoring in the, the bottoms of these. Um, other things I wanted to give a shout out to is freaking tech screws. These things rock. Um, these actually did better than I would have thought. Um, and here's the, what I was using and they go up to a quarter inch of steel. That's what they're rated to. Uh, so I was using them for anchoring this end plate here and stud to the, uh, to this. And I realized, you know, not everybody's going to have this kind of construction, but if you ever have to join, some wood to some metal. These things are, are your ticket. They rock. They even have like a little, um, you can see there's, there's a little winglet. Hang on. I'm trying to get this in focus. There's a little winglet at the front of it. You can see these little guys here. So what that does is it bores out so that these threads don't grab on the, on the wood. And then once you hit the metal, so it'll spin freely in the wood, pretty much pre-drilling it. Um, and then once you get the metal, it'll tap through the metal and these winglets will, will fold back from the metal 
and it'll tap it. So they rock. They did a great job. They really sunk these in really, really tight. So yeah. And then um, with the rest of the framing, it should be done hopefully next weekend. Today is the following Saturday from the other part of this video. So um, I took the week off. I don't know if you could tell, but I was absolutely beat in the, the uh, last, in the other part of the video. So um, yeah, hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll be done. We'll have the, the studs up, or the rafters up over here. Um, I want to get this all done. That's my main concern right now. The, the spawn lab is not a huge priority. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get all this done. We got to do a little bit of correction. We actually messed up up here. There's the, uh, we didn't do a header plate. So we got to swap from doing the joist running that way with the end plates to have a top plate running that way and then do hangers because that is not strong. That is strong, if that makes sense. But I still want to have the door be eight foot ceiling. So I'm going to do it by switching to a top, a top plate, a top header or whatever the hell they're called. So yeah. So hopefully you like this video. Um, as you can tell, I actually did some editing for a change. So I got some editing software and I'll be doing more of that, especially I, I feel like now that I'm doing more of steps and, you know, pro a lot of progress in one day, I think that it's a lot more beneficial to start editing and, um, it'll make the better, better content overall without having to watch five separate videos. So hopefully you like this, check out patreon.com slash Myers mushrooms. If you'd like to support my channel, um, shop Myers If you'd like to also support my channel and, um, yeah, have a good one. Keep on mushrooming. Take it easy.